Howdy folks, welcome back for another fun reloading video. Today we're going to be trying to reload some 9mm projectiles sent into the channel for a good honest review. So that's what we're going to do. Here we have some Brazos 9mm projectiles. These are cast in what looks to be like a high-tech coating. They're sized to 356. We have a 115 grain bevel base with the gold coating. Here's my dummy round here. This one's not loaded, so I was just trying to do this for a plunk test to make sure it worked in my guns. Feels perfect, feeds off the magazines, all that fun stuff. It doesn't seem to have been set back or any of that stuff when chambering between four or five different guns, so that's good as well. We landed right at 1.080 as far as our overall length, I do believe, and that was to make sure it fit inside of the Hellcat, which has a really picky chamber compared to all my other 9mm pistols. So anyways, if you're new to reloading or whatever, and you haven't reloaded any cast projectiles, you may be stuck to jacketed because you've always heard about you get leading and it's so dirty and all this and so on and so forth. Well, a cheap option for reloading are coated projectiles, not bare lead, but coated. You can find them even cheaper than plated projectiles, which is a little softer than jacketed as well. But anyways, if you're not quite into casting, but you want to reload for cheap, some coated lead projectiles could be what you're looking for. So I haven't loaded any of these yet, as you can see once again, but I did pull 10 of them out. We weighed them, I measured them as far as diameter just to see how consistent they were. We tried the smash test, which sees how well that uh, coating is actually bonded onto your projectiles. So we'll go over that here in just one second. So let's pull up the data real quick. I'll just leave an awesome chart over here. All right, there's our awesome graphics in the chart we're gonna just put into the video. They weighed an average of 118.1 grains. The low was 116.1 grains and a high of 119.4. And that's a spread of 3.3 grains, which is plus or minus 1.65 from our average there. So if you take your plus or minus variance, that's only 1.6 grains out of 118.1 grains. That's only a 1.3% variance, which is very consistent for a cast and coated projectile. You guys that cast your own, you might get swings of up to five grains as far as your total spread, depending on your alloy, how well you keep that cleaned and mixed up and whatnot. But for a commercial supplier that just pumps them out in bulk, I don't actually know their process, but for a bulk kind of offering here, you can see a variance of 1.3%. That's pretty consistent. Not too bad, especially for uh, range ammo or blasting or high volume competition shooters, so on and so forth. And then I measure the diameter. It says here we're at 0 0.0356 inches, which is what you want for cast bullets. You need one thousandth over standard jacketed diameter, generally. Generally speaking, you want one thousandth over. So. They suggest 0.356 for a 9mm projectile, and in fact all 10 of them were 0.356 inches indeed. So very consistent as far as measurements, weights and uh, dimensions go. And like I said, making the dummy round was no issue at all. I just kept seating it further and further until it freely plunked in my most picky of chambers. And again, we ended up with 1.080 inches. So we're gonna load up maybe five of these. We'll run out back test them, test them for function, take a look at our brass, see if the primers are looking wonky or any of that, and then we'll come and load up maybe 50 more and hit the range for some good mag dumping and fun like that. So today we're going to be using the Fiocchi small pistol primers. They come in the awkward as hell 150 pack in rows of eight. So if you have an awesome kind of OCD thing, that's really fun because if I need 50 or start with five like I'm going to, then I have to do math and count and all that fun stuff. But if you check it out, the other side has one row of six. Once again, because math. But anyways, that's always awkward if you want to do, say, 100 or 50 pieces at a time. So that's fun with the Fiocchis, although 150 pack, very cool. So that's the primer we are running with. I love these for a uh, cheaper option, especially compared to CCI's or Remington's Winchester's. These are a little bit cheaper. You pay more total price, but per primer, it's usually a little bit lower, it seems. And they always go bang, and they're way easier to see than those crappy Eunice Genix primers. By crappy, I mean they go bang every single time I pull the trigger on one. 
but they seem way over diameter and they're very hard to seat. So anyways, Fioki primers, good to go. I have 100 pieces of brand new Starline brass here. And uh, I've never actually bought 9mm brass, so why not get some Starline? Because that stuff is good, I'll tell you what. Look how clean and shiny. So 100 units of Starline brass there. And we're using Winchester 244, which I have in this uh, container there from Gun Show Bob. Uh, yeah, anyways. 244, I've tested this stuff before. The charge I'm gonna go with gave an extreme spread of maybe 10 feet per second with a 115 grain cast bullet before. So that's what we're gonna use. It's actually three tenths under the maximum, so I feel safe with that as well. So I'm gonna start with about five cases here, like we said. We'll go out back, do some test rounds, and see what happens and go from there. Stand by. Right, sorry, I mentioned the smash test, and you can see some of this actually started to flake off, but you can also see I smashed the hell out of it. This is way more compression and uh, deformation than you would get from it just going down the barrel. So as we did this other one a little, a little flatter, as obviously that's not the shape of the rifling, but maybe a little more realistic as far as the smash test. It's a good coating, it's bonded to the bullet properly, no problem there. But let me show you some powder coated ones, and this is why I prefer powder coating to high tech, which is not necessarily a slam on Brazos, but just if you're casting in general, I prefer powder coating over high tech. So these are some double lot buck pellets I made and cast, and you can see I smashed the hell out of those too. And the only place our coating came off is where the lead pellet actually split. So here we got a little miniature Pac-Man, and that's the only spot where our coating came apart. So powder coating, much more durable, able to withstand much higher velocities and pressures. That's why you can use this stuff for uh, rifle rounds. People generally say 2,000 to 2,500 feet per second, depending on your alloy, of course. But powder coating for me as a caster is the way to go. But we're just testing a somewhat mass-produced cast and coated bullet here, which will be better than bare lead itself. And just once again, for the record, I will iterate that these are properly coated and will not let up your barrel with proper pressure and velocity. However, if you were to say stick this into a PCC super long barrel, maybe 16 plus inches with a slow burning powder, pushing it as hard as you can, you know, to the maximum plus P pressures and stuff, you might have some issues there, but what we're going to be doing is shooting it through a four inch handgun, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm not running max loads or anything. It's going to be pretty generous and soft and uh, mediocre as far as pressure goes, which is what these are for. Bulk loading, soft shooting, training, clinking, perhaps competition if you can meet your power factor. I don't know if that's possible with that sort of weight bullet, but we have some others to try and we'll get there. But anyways, let's load up a few and I'll stop rambling. All right, we only need five to just do a quick test load. One, two, three, five. Shaky. Seems kind of ridiculous to do all this just for five, but oh well. Whoa. Come here, come here, come here. There we go. So this should be a piece of cake. We have the sizing die installed, but it's not needed. Oh, it just seated so smoothly. Beautiful star line with that Fiocchi and a piece of powder stuck into it already. That's just perfect. Oh, I'm just kidding. Anyways, we're already dialed into our powder charge. Oops. Let me get my locator button uh, put back where it actually belongs. Come on now. There we go. We're getting our powder again, 4.4 grains of the Winchester 244, roughly 1100 feet per second, extreme spread of 10 on that load. 
And I guess I could have shown you something. Let's take a look at our case fill. Not bad on the case fill, although this one is capable of a double charge, which would be catastrophic. So you need to be very careful of all that. And you can see I've got quite a bell on that mouth, probably excessive, but I was just running the 358 sized 125s that I like to load. I could back that off, but for now it's working just fine because we're still at 356. Put our locator back, locator button back, and ensure we're primed. We've got powder. This one is seated. Very nice. These are going to look awesome when they're all loaded up. Tell you what. Yeah. And one more. Last one here. Well, let's take a look at our finished round. So it's got this beautiful gold projectile, brand new beautiful Starline brass, and the matching Fiocchi primer. That just looks cool to me, brother. I'll tell you what. That looks cool to me, man. And you know, most of what we do in this life is just to look cool in front of other people, right? Look what I can do, yeah. Look at me go, yeah. Not like I ever do any of that or anything though. But <laughs> Anyways, these are running perfectly smooth, last one. Oh yeah, looky there. Very nice. And if you go to an indoor range or something and they're picky and say no cast loads, you can only shoot full metal jackets. These look just like a brass coated full metal jacket, like a Max Tech or something like that. You could totally get away with those suckers. Suck on that. I'm not shooting reloads. Look, I'm shooting, shooting this full metal jacket from the factory guy. <laughs> Anyways, where'd my magazine go? Yeah. The only spare open magazine I had was this Glock 17 mag, so we'll take it outside real quick and blast it at the target and see if I can't recover some brass. We'll take a look at that and we'll uh, come back and see if that's the load we're going to do some more with. Let's pack up, head outside real quick. I'll be right back with you. Okay, folks, welcome out to the new dummy round range. I only have a single target down there. But I just thought I'd show you what I've started with. I'm just kind of clearing out the area here so I can have a table set up, maybe a barrel or something to put all my crap on. And here's where I'll be shooting 50 and then eventually clear all that up to go out to maybe 75 or 100, depending how far we can get. Anyways, moving up here, I would kind of like to kind of scatter a bunch of steel targets all about so we can kind of move from side to side and have different angles and different targets and stuff like that. And eventually get somewhere that I can pattern some shot shell loads as well. Maybe lean a pallet up somewhere. I don't know, I'm trying not to be too uh, hillbilly redneck about it, but you never know what'll happen. Anyways, we're running the Gen 5 Glock 17 today. We're gonna scoot up to about 10 yards and uh, shoot a couple, check our brass, and then just hit the steel a few times. All right, we've got our five rounds loaded. Let's go try it out. That was good, kind of where I wanted it. Let's take a look at our brass. All right, well, I'm not sure if I hit record or not, but we found our piece of brass. I guess I'm going to take four more shots, and we'll go from there. All right, we've got four more left here. Let's just see. Uh, hit the target a few times. Yeehaw! Here we so here's our cute little target. One, two, three, four, five. You can see where those hit there. And that was obviously just offhand at roughly 10-ish yards. Uh, good enough for plinking, and that's what these are for. Good deal, just came back in. They went where I pointed them. The brass looks freaking great. I haven't wiped these off at all. I thought for a second there was maybe a little bit of soot. Maybe just a tad bit of blow by there, but the other ones 
super clean burn. It is called wind clean after all. You can even see the insides of the case still not completely sooted or blacked out or whatever. There are some really dirty cases or some really dirty powders rather and they'll just be totally blacked out after a half a firing, you know, just if you look at it wrong. You'll be like, well, that's dirty. But the wind clean with this bullet seems like a pretty good combination. Once again, our brass in superb condition. Primers are all very rounded, consistent striker marks. Maybe just a tad bit of cratering, but I think that's a characteristic of my Glock rather than a sign of pressure. As we all know, primers are a very horrible sign of pressure. But anyways, I think I'm going to load up maybe 50 more of these and we'll come back for another range trip in a new video, just uh, blasting, having some fun, maybe with some of those other bullets I've got to test over there. Anyways, first impressions of the Brazos bullets. Uh, so far, 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, would load again. I'll have to do an extended session to see if it fouls up my barrel at all or if we have any, you know, crazy malfunctions or anything. But for now, you know, pretty impressed. Not a bad product. Although, once again, I'm more of a fan of powder coating if you're going to do it on your own. But if you're just going to start getting into reloading cheap as you can, cast and coated bullets are definitely the way to go, even compared to plated. And guess what? Brazos gave me a promo code that you guys can use for 5% off your order. They said limit one order per customer, but if you use the promo code dummy round on their website, it'll be pretty easy to find if you want. You will get 5% off, so go and check those guys out. Seems like they're making a pretty good product here. I have several others to test. We've got some 38 specials, some 357 magnums, some 147 grain 9 mils to try out, and some 45 Colt offerings, and even of super heavy 45 caliber I might try out in the Bushmaster or the 454 Casul. So stay tuned, we're going to be playing with a lot of these Brazos bullets. And I forgot to add, you can get these in sample packs rather than full size orders. I think they just come in 5 pound bags. So if you're curious about trying them out, that's the best option. So go try out a sample pack if you need to. So make sure to go and check them out and use the promo code DUMMYROUND to get 5% off your order. Anyways, thanks for checking it out today guys. I'll see you out on the range when we go and test about 50 more of these plus some other Brazos offerings. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.